So I'm here at Exum Studios gallery, specifically in the studio. And what I'll be working with today is this bad boy. And I will be sharing to everyone like how do I do like photo shoot. I, for me, I still consider this as a location shoot because I don't have my full equipment. I don't have like my big lights and everything. So I, I just have to work with whatever I have. I kinda don't consider the XM Studios lights because they're very, I mean, very bright and I cannot really control them that much. Um, and I cannot move them around compared to what I have. So that's why I still consider this as a location shoot. Anyway, I'm gonna show everyone some tips and tricks to light this bad boy. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Engine's Place. So you've seen me pose a lot of photos, also incorporate a lot of photos in my videos because I just love photography and I want to share something with you guys on how I take them. Um, it's not really that complicated. There's some point that it is, but there are some things that you can uh, do it yourself also, which you don't need like very fancy gear. Uh, do take note, I do have a good uh, gear as well, but it doesn't mean you cannot do it with like a simple camera. Even with a, with a smartphone camera, you can do it as long as you apply some of these things. Uh, know the techniques as well, so that's why I want to share that with you guys. Additionally, I will be sharing also something like a bonus, like how I try to color grade the Alita. Uh, you will see later. Um, then maybe you can let me know what you think, uh, but that would be at the end, that would be just a bonus. Either way, super excited to start, so let's get started. So the very first thing I do check is actually the different angles of the piece. So uh, a bit tricky for this case because this is not my piece, so I'm kind of limited to just now looking at it compared to some pieces that I am actually doing, or it's actually mine and and like every day I'm doing like looking at it, checking it out, looking for the best angles to shoot. Um, because I mean, it's not that easy looking at the different angles because you don't know. I don't want also to miss the opportunity where I don't take a shot of that angle. And that's why I really wanted to, to really check it, study it because the next step would be lighting it just like what I, I did now i just added the lighting just to give some emphasis so get i have something to look at sometimes it kind of takes me around like a day or two to really find the the right angles for the piece where i wanted to get so there's sometimes go from up going down or left to right uh some even at like a, like i i really have to turn the the piece at the back that one that actually applies to the PCS Akuma, that one looks phenomenal even though he's like, you're taking pictures uh, of his back, pretty awesome. So yeah, it's, that kind of helps with at least it, when you are starting already to take the photos itself, you will not, let's say, get stuck on the different angles. Maybe you get a list already of the different angles. So for me, at least that helps. So as for the lighting, I actually have um, two of these really beautiful stuff. I recommend getting some something like this, this LED lights. It actually can change the, let me try to turn on like that. And you can just change the colors. You can see now it's purple, blue, that kind of stuff. You get the idea. Um, and which I will explain later, there, you don't have to buy so many big ones or anything. This would be enough, which I will explain later. I also do have some, let's, let's say a more elongated um, LED lights there. Uh, this piece is there, here. This one's, um, I, this also are RGB. There, let me get this. And these are mostly what I use if I'm location, um, uh, shooting in location, photo shoot in location. I use this more on the main lights because they're they're brighter and everything. Though that one is also quite bright, but I kind of like this. It gives a very nice line. 
um, like light, light, nice line lighting. And these are my light stand. I also have another one which I will be using. So yeah, those are my lighting. More or less, I should have at least four. I will actually turn off all of that, make everything dark. So yeah, that's for the lighting. Here uh, in my collection room or my small studio, <laughs> I do have a big, uh, I have a strobe light and I have a continuous light. So those two are two different things. The strobe light sometimes help, but what I always use is what I'm using now for videos and photos like a, a steady light or a continuous like there I guess they're LEDs they're very useful uh, but again when I go to other location I really don't, don't need that because even if I use this big light I am just using like I don't know less than 10% of its power um, it's not really necessary to have like big power of your lighting uh, I just don't see that especially to some pieces that are like this just this small or one fourth scale maybe some that are very big you might need but either way you really don't need a very powerful big lighting one of the ways I can actually conserve let's say lighting is since I am taking photos of a non-living thing and I don't need it that it they will be moving or anything so I kind of don't need like uh, like fast shutter speed and I don't that means I also don't need strobes um, what I can actually use is a long exposure uh, and, and even conserve the lights, meaning I don't even have to, um, let, I hope it focuses, I don't need to put them so bright. As you can see, this is just 4% and most of the lighting there are not even in high or full um, power because I can just do the settings here and normally I always have uh, the 11, uh, 11, F11 because it gives me, a, I think this is the for the 85, um, 85mm, 1.2 for the Canon, I think it's the sweet spot for like very crisp um, photos uh, for that aperture. So I'm using the f11 and depends on the lighting or how dark or how bright I want to have, then I use the, uh, the shutter speed is there. And I always keep the ISO at 200. For long exposure tutorials, check out on the internet there's a lot uh, youtube there's a lot of tutorials or you can also check out some books photography books but this is what i use uh, again because my subject is not moving um, i can conserve the lighting uh, this is why i love that technique the only drawback for this is you really really need as much as possible like a darker place um, because with the long exposure it will really absorb all the lights and you your light your some of your lighting might get lost along the way meaning the if the ambient lighting is much brighter your lighting which are like what I have are like small LED lights might disappear from that so or might not be seen in the photos because the ambient light is just too bright so since I'm also not using any strobes uh, I'm also conserving the the power of the lighting the battery and all of that and i'm using long exposure so there is actually a prone it's prone to more or less shakes so what i have noticed especially when i do a long exposure when i press i think it even catches the pressing and it somehow let's say wobbles and everything so what i always do is i put it in timer sometimes if it's really complicated like this one uh, sometimes I put it at 10 seconds and then uh, yeah 10 seconds trigger or a something like a two seconds if it's not complicated so like this it's a bit hard um, sometimes but I also don't want to use always 10 seconds because it's too long your weight will be too long and that's a bit tiring actually the first time I kind of experienced like a shaking in the photo was when I take, took a photo of like, I think my aperture was 1.2 and I have a, how do I say, like I, I wanted to do a light, light streak and it was quite, quite dark, all that kind of stuff. And I have a long exposure. When I pressed it, I didn't realize that 
it was shaking. When I press it, it gives a shake. So I'm not so sure. Maybe my ball head isn't that super good or all of that stuff. So I, I but I, the problem was I didn't knew that when I was looking at the camera. In, when I look at the camera LCD, LED, uh, the screen, it was okay. But when I look at it in the, in the PC, in the MacBook, it was like, whoa, it's sh somehow like shaky. And I was like, oh, and then that I have to go back, set it up again. So that was quite tiring. So I realized when I press it, there's actually kind of shake. So what I did is I kind of used the timer. And that's where I said I realized, okay, then if I can use this so that I don't give a shake to either the tripod, to the camera, or anything to reduce that shake. So I use that timer. When I take photos, I always have somehow like two different settings, at least two. So one is in terms of the high um, F11. I always have that. And then I will also be having a f1.2. Uh, one of the reasons is I want to make sure that I got the different exposures. Uh, I don't miss it. Um, and also when I do the Lightroom, if I see something, I can add some presets to it and then it becomes more creative. That would be so amazing. So that's what I always do. Have a different exposures so that when you edit, you have different options. Typically, I always have like three apertures for the like, different exposures so normally i have the two f f11 and 1.2 um, and i also have the f2 and i play around the the shutter speed so i always have this three um let's say i, I say exposure because it again depends and if i move around and the lighting is not that good not that great i have to adjust that so it depends on the shutter speed as well but most of the time I have three so that when I look at the when I look at it when I'm editing I have some uh, options especially I do some other like uh, presets additionally like color grade them and all of that it's quite nice and at least you have that option otherwise when you go in there and then it's too dark um, all that kind of stuff and then you, again I don't want to keep going back and redoing it because it's not that easy sometimes and I'm always afraid that I might damage the piece. So there you go. Those are my basic tips for stage view photography. Let me know if also if you want to have like a like really like a tutorial uh, but I think if we're gonna do that, let's focus in some areas like specific areas if you want to have something like the lighting, how I do the lighting, how do I power the, my light sources, how do I angle them, maybe we can talk to that, talk about that or maybe like how do I uh, edit that kind of stuff. We can also talk about that or maybe some other stuff or some other techniques like long exposures with like light streaks with the lower aperture there's also that kind of stuff do let me know leave your um, comments um, anything re any request down below i would love to try that as well and yeah either way i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something and as always click the thumbs up and share it with everyone and also subscribe to my channel the ancient's play so You'll help my channel grow. See you in the next video. As promised, a bonus of how I edit my photo, uh, more or less like how I do the color grading. It's kind of, let's say, very simple because I sometimes I start with using a pre uh, presets and then I kind of change that depending on how I uh, how I want it to look. So for this, um, I'm using. I'll be showing you the Alita, the portrait that I did for Alita. She's awesome. I think I did photography for her like three days straight. Uh, anyway, let's get started. Um, so I have a photo here. Uh, normally, if I don't want to have that kind of tone, um, the edit is pretty quite straightforward. So with this photo, I just somehow, let's say, lower the highlights to, to emphasize the skin tone and everything. And more or less that's it and if I also wanted to really highlight or show like darker shadows whatever is behind that so I can also let's say push a bit into a positive side for the shadows making it more brighter 
something like that and I, I have to look at it I even have, want to see it in the darker um, so do take note sometimes with this kind of edits you might need like a very good monitor so that you can really see properly the exposures and everything that's why I really love the, the Mac because it gives me not the true uh, the true photo or colors and everything exposure but it at least it's closer to that um, so this is just a basic edit but if I want to do like a somehow like a tone like for example this one um, with this which I, the ones that I have posted um, I I what I do is I always have some presets uh, for this case there's a preset which is cinematic so as you can see it's quite dark it doesn't look good to be honest because I, I didn't like this like kind of tone it has to be brighter but I have to do some editing with this once the preset is now set <laughs> um, what I do is somehow like do some changes so I don't like the, the exposure because it's like minus 0.55 so I want to use my own meaning how I, I took the photo and it's also quite dark so I just need to bring it back uh, make it brighter. I don't want it to be super bright so something like this as you can see and I noticed that it's very yellowish I think it could be something due to the uh, temperature so meaning the white balance so I have to change this as well uh, I want to make it a bit cooler so dropping it down to around 50 or 5,000 uh, 5100 or somewhere there uh, have it like this as you can see now it's looking much good um, I do still find it's a bit darker though um, so I don't want the whites I want to use the exposure that I have because I like the exposure that I have I also notice that there's clarity here so I don't want that because it kind of changes also the exposure a bit so something like this and I think I want it a bit warmer just a bit I think 5400 would do something like that um, like this one uh, yeah so as you can see the difference hopefully I can show the difference like this that's the difference um, if I do like somehow color graded and have a like nicer tone so it would look like this so yeah there you go um, yeah, I hope you learned something about that. <laughs> it's just an additional stuff. Anyway, thank you.